Today I am in the kitchen and hopefully I got the camera right and you can see me. <laughs> Here's the new mixer and I'm all set and I had some eggnog, eggnog in the refrigerator that wasn't being used so I went online and looked up some recipes to use the eggnog and I found a perfect recipe. So the recipe is called eggnog fruit bread. So this is the first time I'm making it. It might be the first time you're making it too. So I've got everything pretty much laid out. Um, what it calls for is three large eggs. So I have my, I have my eggs here. I've got a little flour on it. Got my eggs and one cup of vegetable oil as much as I hate using vegetable oil. I have some here um, that I'm using. I didn't, I didn't go out and look for um, with the equivalent for butter or coconut oil. Uh, coconut oil, because it goes solid um, in the cold, would be a little, I'd have to melt it down and that kind of thing. And same thing with butter, but you know, butter would have given it a different kind of flavor. And since this is the first time I'm making it, I think I'll use the oil that I had here. One and a half cups of sugar. So I have cane sugar here. That's all set up for it. And then three, a three quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract and three quarters teaspoon of rum extract. Well, didn't have any rum extract. So in here, in this one, is three quarter teaspoon of vanilla and a teaspoon and a half of rum. <laughs> yeah, making sure I get that flavor. Um, so it'll be a little bit more liquid in here, but that's okay. One and a half cups of the eggnog. So I had the eggnog there and ready. Then it calls for three cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one half teaspoon of salt, and one half teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I have whole nutmeg and it came with a thing, a personal grinder, so I have fresh ground nutmeg. All of that has been put inside the flour. It's sitting there. I'm just going to mix it all together now. So that's all done. So, but this is two and a half cups of the flour right now. And I'll tell you why in a minute. One cup of candied fruit. I had some because I was going to make fruit cake. Well, pecan fruit cake. And a half a cup of chopped walnuts. I have that there all ready and set to go. Now it tells me a couple of things in its directions. Two and a half cups of flour, baking powder, salt, and nut bag. Grad gradually added to the egg mix mixture. Then toss the fruit in the remaining flour. So I've got the fruit here, and once I get this, I have the remaining flour here, and I'm going to mix it in this bowl. I wasn't going to dirty up another bowl. Or I could, once I put the sugar in, we can do that. All right. So let's get started. Oh, and I'll put the directions down in the de description. Okay, I hope the camera was doing good um, while I was doing that explanation. So, in a large bowl, beat the eggs to the bowl. So, here's the deal. Um, and I like to... You know, you never know with eggs. So I am cracking my egg one at a time and putting in the bowl. Let's see what I've got here. 
make sure you can see what I'm doing. Let's go a little closer. Let's tilt her down a little bit. Level her out. There we go. Alright. Well, I'm not going to put you all down up in the bowl. <laughs> no. So anyway, so that's one egg. And I haven't learned yet how to, you know, crack, crack the egg with one hand. But I'll be, I start pastry classes, pastry school next week. And next week I will be doing introduction to baking and what's called serve safe. And so that, what that's going to do is teach me how to be um, safe in the kitchen, how to be antiseptic or clean in my kitchen, which I already am, but we do that. So it says, in large bulk, beat eggs and oil. So I'm going to take the oil and pour it in the bowl. Now, this will be the first time I turn this on, you know, since I got this. So you so in the beginning of this was, of course, the getting of this new mixer. Okay. So, eggs. And there's a little lever here. I put that down. Ooh. And it lights up. It's giving me a little bright light. So we've got the cover here. And this moves kind of like the KitchenAid. But listen to the sound. Oh, I like this better than my Oster, because my Oster makes a lot of noise. Oh, I'm really loving this, because I can talk. Hopefully you can hear me. Well, I didn't realize how loud the sound was, so I had to cut it. And what I'm going to do now is show you how that action is it's really getting to the bottom of the bowl and it's really working around the edges of the bowl the loudness to me was not great and it was actually so much better than when i was using the oster so i'm just being pretty amazed at the sound level and being up on number three on the on this uh, mixer so let's see what comes next as we get the oil and the sugar working well together or is that the oil and the eggs that's the oil and the eggs yeah <laughs> what am i doing oh yeah so the mixer was moving quite a bit but this is the table that I'm using because I've got a galley kitchen and and so as I did other videos and I'm on the countertop it made it kind of difficult to have the camera there so this stand I had um, when I was doing craft shows and it was my stand that I put my um, cash register on and I had bags and things in it now I'm now going through and looking at the ingredient list or the recipe and looking at, okay, so what comes next? And what comes next is the sugar. And what I noticed about this cover is the fact that it does not have that little, um, what I want to call it, funnel edge like the other ones do. But as you see, I can uh, easily add the ingredients, in this case, you know, a spoonful at a time, which is what we really should do. It's about a spoonful at a time. In the reviews, someone was complaining because they said they put the flour in and it went everywhere and, you know, got flour on them. And I'm going, well, how do you do that when... You know you got this cover on top everything is 
is going in in this one area and the action of the paddle is so good that it's it's incorporating everything as you put it in so it's really a good thing so got my added making sure i get all the sugar um into there and incorporating making sure that the egg and the oil and the sugar uh, especially the sugar gets um, dissolved in the mixture and I wasn't quite sure how long I should mix it now I'm putting in the vanilla and then the rum um, of course the rum the alcohol in the rum is going to cook off in the oven but it'll give it some really good rum flavor because i start almost did almond extract but that would have given it a definitely a different flavor in there so but it's mixing well looks like i slowed it down no yeah i'm stopping it to to see the condition of the mixing of the egg and the sugar and the rum but it's it the mixture is really um great and the sides the mixture isn't all up on the sides but it's all being mixed quite well one of the things with the stand mixer the oster kitchen center and with my hand mixer you know how you got to scrape down the sides all the time well look at this i didn't have to do any scraping down the side and as and you'll see when I start putting in the flour that the flour just goes in and it really just starts mixing well now I'm trying to figure out now what am I doing at this point because it looks like I'm just talking ah I'm getting ready to put in the eggnog all right because that's that other glass bowl there it is so putting in the eggnog slowly so what i realized is that we're mixing and getting all the liquid ingredients into the mixer first and i know that when i'm using the blender you do that too you put all the liquid ingredients first when I'm making bread and I'm putting it in the bread machine, you put all the liquid ingredients in the bottom. I didn't realize how, how much this table was shaking. It wasn't, it didn't seem like it was shaking that much, but the power of this mixer is really great. That, and it is really moving, but I'm telling you the sound wasn't bad to me but to you it might have been really hard on you okay so this is the dried fruit looks like i missed it showing it to you but i'm mixing the that last half cup of flour with the dried fruit as it, and what that does is by mixing the the flour on the dried fruit the dried fruit or sweet fruit is really sticky so by putting the flour on it, it helps to separate all the pieces. And so when it when I finally do mix it in to the batter, then the pieces will be separated and they will go into the batter and that flour will be absorbed. All right, so what am I doing now? Uh, wiping out the counter, I spilt some egg on it. <laughs> anyway let's see i know the flour is coming next because i mean all the liquid is is really mixed there's not that much air being mixed in toss the fruit with remaining flour and stir it to batter so it's good and covered It's got to incorporate all this flour and the fruit.
don't know about you, but I wash as I go. Alright. I'm going to lift this. I'm going to scrape the sides. Near the top. But there's not that much to scrape. I mean, it's really incorporated all the flour. Even, I mean, when I use my other mixer or even my kitchen center, I had to scrape down the sides of the bowl on a regular basis. All right, I'm going to mix this a little bit more. Put some nice thick. Put it back on slow. And now I'm taking my nuts and mixing them in. I think I chopped them up a little bit too much, but there's enough bigger pieces. These are walnuts. And it called for a half, it was a half a cup. It's probably a little bit more than a half a cup because I really love nuts. Now, this will be more like a cake or a bread, right? Fruit bread. But I have a recipe for fruitcake that is mostly pecans. And I really love it because it's not hard. It's not like my mother's used to be. And she had to um, soak it in whiskey to soften it up. I really do like this. I didn't know whether I've got a regular hand mixer that I use all the time. Just bought a new one that has a whisk on it and dough hooks and all that, but um, to replace my old hand mixer. Well, I'm going to tell you, I really like the sound of this. I really like the way it mixed everything. Um, I'm really liking this. And it looks like it's going to be easy to clean. So, since this is on there, because I was put a put a tablecloth on here because this thing has stains on it, but a lot of uh, what do you want to call for mica tops have stains on it. Okay. Oh, by the way, this is a six and a half quart bowl. So if you're looking at KitchenAid six and a half or six quart or six and a half quart bowl, you're looking at a four to five hundred dollar machine. And this was delivered less than a hundred and fifty. And the sound is good. Let's see what we got here. Now it's supposed to be able to fill two tins. That's one. Oops. Let's let the drippings go into the container. Okay. Stop. Let's put some more in this one. This one is nowhere is full. I'm happy. It took me a while to decide. I had gotten another one, um, a Cuisinart one at the, at the store. And I sat it here for a while, never opened it, and just decided I had my kitchen center. I didn't need it. And for those of you that don't know, Cuisinart is owned or 
Cuisinart owns KitchenAid or KitchenAid owns Cuisinart. And the Cuisinart mixer takes KitchenAid attachments just for your future reference. But if you don't need all those attachments, if you don't need the spaghetti maker or the sifter or the, the Okay. My memory card filled up and I had to go find another one. I did. I found another brand new one that I had. Okay. So, we've got two containers, two of these. This is easy to remove. Put it in my water, and it tastes good, even though I've got raw eggs in it. You see how easy it is to take that off. Now, supposedly the um, the mixers are dishwasher safe. Of course, you can't <laughs> put this in the dishwasher. But the mix, the mixers, the the stainless steel bowl, they're all dishwasher safe. But I was reading the reviews. And it says, yes, you can do it in a dishwasher, but it's recommended that you do them by hand. Everybody recommend it by hand. Now, I'm going to unplug this. All right. So, I like the sound. They did say it was relatively quiet. What did they say? 78 dBS? Well, my dishwasher is 59. And I can barely hear it. I have to walk up on it and you can talk, but I think you heard, I left the sound on, I think you heard that it is really good. Okay, so let me kind of lift this up a little bit and turn it that way. And so now, it says to cook them at 350 degrees for 60 to 65 minutes or until toothpick comes out clean, cool for 10 minutes. So I'm going to put these in the oven. My oven is already preset. So I've set it for 60 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll see what they are, what they look like, and what they taste like. But right now, my opinion is, I really like my Acu Acuma. Well, uh-oh. My Acuba. Let's go. And it's called an Acuba. And I got it on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. They got multiple colors. They got blue and white and black and I think aqua and well this isn't described as red but you know what? It's the same color as my vehicle. So well almost the same color as my vehicle. My vehicle has a little bit more yellow in it. It's called Sunset Red and not, you know, this is just called Red, but this is more of a burgundy red. All right, be back in a little bit. Well, it took 70 minutes in my 350 degree oven for the toothpick to come out clean. So... I've got it out and I've let them sit as long as I could uh, because I'm ready to have some. I need to get a plate. Okay. And 
And so, I use this to go around the edge to take it out of the bread pan. So this is a serrated edge. And it's nice crusty outside. Boy, that really looks good. But that's the end. This is what the inside looks like. I'm going to make sure you're getting that. Yes. So this is what... Uh, tighten it in. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's take it in just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Oops. Anyhow. So look at that. And the fruit is all in there. So it's called fruit bread and not fruit cake. So make this and it's nice and warm but I'm going to take a piece of the end. It's not super sweet. It Now I'm not tasting the rum. <laughs> But the alcohol will leave the rum. But I like this crunchiness of the outside. You know, it's kind of like having a brownie with the outside. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. I know this part's going to be good. And I'm going to put... Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some butter on it. And hopefully... <laughs> I don't wind up eating half of this tonight because this is really good. It's flavorful. Mm, hold on. It's flavorful. And I just got a piece of the fruit. It's moist. So this is a good alternative to a dry um, fruitcake. So this fruit bread recipe is really good for me. So, try it, and send me an email or put comments below to let me know if you tried it and how it tastes. And if you really like this recipe, please give me a thumbs up. If you like the review I did on the mixer, because this is you know, part one, part two, right? Um, just let me know. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please come on and subscribe. This is a really good recipe. Until the next time, I'll see you in the next video.